Hey guys, welcome back to more episodes of the X Files. We're on a brand new season, episode two of season six. Um, I'm not expecting it to continue with the boy and the the conspiracy theory uh, storyline that we've been following from the movie and all the way back to the last episode or two of, of season five. I don't know what's going to happen with the X Files. I don't know what's going to happen with Mulder and Scully or Spender or this other woman who's coming to me now. We're, we're just going to have to get used to the way things are operating for the time being. So, with that said, let's get on with it. This is episode two. 90 miles and counting. That's how far officers of the Nevada Highway Patrol have pursued the blue car on your screen. Live on the scene in Carlin is Chuck Pickering in the Fox 11 News Chopper. I used to Chuck, love watching these tell- police chases. Benjamin, we're heading west following the route Chuck seven, Pickering. Six. Any word yet on who the driver is? Not at this time. What we do think, though, and what we've passed on to the highway patrol is that from our vantage point, we've seen another person in that car. Oh, it's a woman. There's something wrong with hearing that. Oh, here come out the spike strips. I mean, he could veer to the left, but he could also go off the bleeding cliff if he does that. <laughs> to team belly. There we go. Well, Chuck, what did they just use there? Got him. It looked to be a special tire puncturing chain. Pulling him out. Got him. He doesn't seem to have a weapon. This is unusual well, stuff. not be armed, but... What the heck? She's... She's banging her head on it. She's off her head. head against the window. What the hell just happened? Whoa! What the fuck happened there? It looked like her head exploded. I figure I got better things to do with my fertilizer and go around blowing government buildings sky high. That's what the concern about. Sir, this is just routine. We reported earlier a wild police pursuit ended in tragedy this morning with the death of a 36-year-old female hostage. A really quiet episode. Hey, Scully, take a look at this. <laughs> she just goes, pop. Look. At this time, highway patrol officials are refusing to identify the woman or to speculate on how she died. Thank you, Captain. That's no problem. We'd be happy to help. Mm-hmm. We'll be happy How are to these help two what? still on the case? I- Mulder, we're not going to Nevada. Come on, Scully. Just one quick side trip. We're on domestic terrorism now. And yes, this is this is a punishment. Okay, he's hearing that sound as well now. There's blood coming out of his nose. Something's Sorry. making his head explode. Why can't we see him? Yeah, hopefully later. I mean, after whatever happened to his wife, which, which I'd like to trust, was not done. our fault. We're not going to take any chances, you know? No prior record. No. He's got one now. That Barracuda he jacked on the Utah state line. He yanked some teenager out of the window, threw his wife in the back, and took off. People don't just... We've just given, been given the specifics to the guy there. A roofer, no priors, no criminal record... Obviously a taxpayer. People don't just suddenly get up one morning, grab their wife, go into a parking lot, pull a teenager out of a car, drive at 100 miles an hour across state lines and act in that way for nothing. On the 5, about 10 miles to the Utah border where he stole the car. You got it. Yeah, but you caught up with him in Wells. Where's that? West to Wells. Why? Finding what looked like fragments of Petra's bone embedded in the remaining portion of the auditory canal. It's almost like a little bomb went off in her ear. Yeah. That's quite accurate, actually. There's something yeah. inside her that exploded. Took half of her head with it. it. Seems to be some kind of tumor faction within the lateral sinus. Oh. What the shit? It has to be something foreign that's been put in them for that to happen. You, your side of your head just doesn't I don't understand. What'd you just do? Hell if I know. I know what you did. I think I know what he did. No, oh, he's, he's looking. He seemed to stabilise the faster the ambulance went. Oh, crap. Well, it's me. There you go. You know how to pick him, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Look, I have no idea what killed this woman, but I have to assume it's communicable. And that means you, Mulder, you're to have no contact with him whatsoever. 
That's a bit difficult. Mulder? He's holding him at gunpoint. Well, that's going to be a little oh. tough, Scully. <laughs> he looks a little bit like him. Where are they going? Prop won't say. Where it is, though, he ain't getting there. They had him west. Roadblock? We'll shut him down east of Tuscarora. Okay. I want the car decontaminated. I want Agent Mulder and Crump decontaminated. And I want them quarantined separately. Crump says that if we don't pull back our escort, he's going to shoot your partner. Yeah, you abducted the wrong person. Shoot people. <laughs> hey! He's abducted. No! Abducted! Fuck that is Bellin. So stupid, Crump. Here we go. When he slows down, does it hurt? What are you doing? What? what am I doing? What the hell are you doing? That hurts him more when you slow down. No! It's something to do with speed. There was an opportunity there when he was, like, almost passing out in the back. Mother could have just got out there and arrested him. But like the rest of us, he wants to know what the fuck's going on. So he's done as he's told. It's something to do, weirdly enough, with... The faster in motion they are, the less pressure it seems to be on their head. Same thing. If you stop moving, you die. I think I saw this movie. <laughs> Why didn't you tell anybody? Why didn't you tell the police? It's right here, boy. Just tell me everything you know. That means it is the only way I can help you. You people put Dick me here. Shut up. What's the report, Captain? They lost them. They were last seen on a forestry service road. Which is what the police are automatically assuming. So far, I'm seeing no evidence of infection in either victim. Don't lie. Sir, I am not currently in the state of Idaho. You can't. No, you're not. No, he knows that. In the course of prosecuting our assignment in Idaho, Agent Mulder and I came across a situation in Nevada which we both strongly felt needed our immediate attention. I think at this point, I want to see him alive even more than you do. Because he's in trouble. This man wants a Silver State Power reading meters. Seems to help keep them alive. What if you read the meter at Vicky Crumb's place? What can you tell me about what's happening? Ah! Ah! What? You're going the wrong way. Can't. Ah! Oh, he's banging his head on the ah! window. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, we've got a little bit more information here because he's not telling us jack shit. So, going faster seems to reduce the symptoms of it or, or, or you know, appeases him a bit more and going in a certain direction does too because Mulder picked that up off the map that the guy initially headed east and then swapped turned around and started we heading west maybe that's what he's saying now that he still wants to continue heading west what the hell can be inside your brain can explode if you don't travel fast going in the direction of west <laughs> It's west. It is west. west. You gotta head west. Yeah. It's just like you did with your wife. You took her and you headed west. See? Ding, ding, ding. It's not just motion. It has to be in one direction. <laughs> oh, the first time I've got a Yeah. So I'm thinking. <laughs> Oh my god. What, what do I, I'm, I'm like, Quincy? How the hell should I know what caused it? So it's only started it just today. Happened. I didn't know what the hell to do. I just, uh, I got her in the truck and taken her to the hospital. I'm sure you are. This guy's lot. The rest of your Jew FBI. Wilds come to Wrong. a yeah. crash and halt. Know. You think I'm just some ignorant pud knocker, don't you? But I get it, man! government guinea pigs that's the only thing i can think of this clearly yeah who else you see it all the time on the tv they're dropping agent orange they're putting radiation in little retarded kids gonads <laughs> well on behalf of the international jewish conspiracy i just need to inform you that we're almost out of gas whatever this thing is it doesn't discriminate no. Zoonotic pathogens which spread among species. How you get, fast, you if ready? you stop, his brain's gonna explode. There goes nothing. Should have pulled on the other side, but I was more than supposed to know which side the gas cap's on. I know what he's doing. Take another car. That's already filled up. Blow the petrol station.
Right, at least you can get in contact that way. Come on, Scully, work it out. Yeah, it's it's Wait, not. What are you doing? Pathology of this thing. It affects the inner ear. Yes. And this area right here is ground zero. We'll die if stopped, same as why. Must head west to keep alive. No roadblocks. Exclamation point. Let him through. Let him through. Look, no offense, Agent Scully, but how about you? What's affecting your mobile signal right here? I think you'll see. And now. <laughs> U.S. government property. So what's that? You gotta go faster. It's getting worse. Oh, Christ. Naval research. Okay. Project... S Project Seafarer? Yeah, I was under the impression that I'd explain this to the FCC's satisfaction. What? I'm, I'm what have you been doing? So sorry to make you run through it again. Uh, at 6.17 yesterday morning during a test of our ground conduction radio system, a situation arose in which our equipment experienced a brief power surge. Really? Would you happen to know what effect such a surge might have on, a, on an organism, say, uh, say a human being? Mm. Theoretically speaking. Theoretically speaking, well, that's classified as well, ma'am. Fuck off. Yeah, use an antenna like 50 miles long. The military used it to communicate with the Trident submarines, Project Seafair, Project Harp. Well, Seafair has an antenna array stretching beneath the edge of Patrick Crump's property. Hum. What if oh. some overload, some, some hum Calls from the that. system could somehow match the resonant frequency of the human skull? I mean, oh. what if it could induce a light hum that, that could somehow exert a, a rising pressure on the labyrinth of the inner ear, in a sense shattering? I mean, maybe it has to follow certain lines of force, electrical or magnetic. We'll be there. Okay. So it's resonated what? at the frequency of well, the human skull. Well, whether they did to you intentionally or not, you were right. Yeah. They did it to you. They did. You were spot on, mate. You just didn't know the specifics. What do we do? And when we get there, she's going to have to work fast. She's only going to have one chance. She's not going to be able to use any anesthetic. Oh, that's going to hurt. She'll probably leave you deaf. But I'll live, right? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what it's all about. All right, man. Let's do it. Scientific basis or theory behind that, but it sounds great. There's your big ass needle. Yeah, he's doing about 20 mile an hour there. <laughs> Oh, bastard. All for nothing. No, that's, that's not fair. Justice wow. Department jet, 2.6 turbine hours, round trip at $1,400 an hour. Of his 1968 Caprice station wagon, $500. What Why don't you bill me? Yeah. I'll bill your partner instead. Back to the bozo work, investigating huge piles of manure? You can always quit. Sir, Agent Mulder has been through a lot. And you apologize for him a lot. I've noticed that about you. Our participation in this case has saved lives. I don't see you proving that. The Department of Defense admits no culpability whatsoever. I don't care if you and your partner saved a school bus full of doe-eyed urchins on their way to Sunday Bible camp. What? The sooner you and Mulder come to recognize that, the better from both of you. You're a prick. Piles of manure. Exactly. A lot of shit. <laughs> that was a really good episode too okay episode two of season six that's incredibly frustrating on numerous outlooks and, and subjects obviously mainly about the x-files and this Kirsch. you know this is the first we've really gotten to see anything of him as to what what he's going to be like we knew they'd end up with a new boss and reassigned here he's just as bad as the rest of them Everything needs to fit into a nice, neat little box. And all he's caring about is you went somewhere you shouldn't have done. You investigate what turned out to be an X-File, which you shouldn't be on. And you've created a lot of expenses and paperwork. And the military are not accepting any culpability for it whatsoever. But they did shut it down because they can't afford any more scandals, can they? And the guy was completely right. First of all, when I, when I come to edit this, I'm going to see the bit where I'm like, whoa, that guy really looks like Walter White. Yeah, ignore that because it happened to be correct. 
I'm so used to seeing the guy with no hair. <laughs> it, it slipped by me for a minute and I didn't spot his name in the credits, which I should have done. That was a really, really good opening episode to bring us into season six away from the main storyline. And couldn't work it out. Could not work. There was no way you was going to work that out. 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes in, no way. But Scully's um, way of looking at it from a scientific point of view and eliminating the impossible only left so many options and she was right about it being affecting the inner ear and about it being a sound. And then going to the, the quote residence, finding the old woman there who's still alive somehow, but she happens to be deaf, was just extra confirmation. Because both of them could hear, the dog could hear, she couldn't, and she was the only survivor. I don't know if there was anyone else in the area, it didn't really say. Um, great little cameo for Brian Cranston there as well. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that episode. It was, it was quite a good one to come back to because it sort of fell in their lap without falling in their lap or a case file that Mulder wants to go look at without telling anybody it was on national news the, the downside to that was Kirsch knew instantly because it was on the news that's why he made that phone call going where exactly are you right now ah incredibly frustrating but we're gonna just have to bide our time i know probably at some point we're gonna get the x-files back but it's, it ain't gonna be yet uh I don't know if any of that could be possibly based on scientific fact whatsoever, but the scenario and the story that they came up with with this Project Seafarer was was ingenious. And that it only affected people in the immediate area of the test that they conducted that morning. And as to why this happened to him and his wife. That was good. Loved it. Right. I'll be back. Episode 3, in a few days' time, we do two episodes a week. I'm sure you must know by now. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, guys, and you're enjoying the X-Files rerun through uh, that we're doing, I would appreciate it if you give the video a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to post your comments down below. And the important bit is to hit the subscribe. And while you're still there, if you do want to watch the full length episode, you can over on Patreon. Just check the link in the description, as always. I will see you for Episode 3 in a few days' time. And... Find out where we go next. Okay, guys, see you for the next one. Take care. Duh.